Hello, this recording is about DRAM technology. DRAM or dynamic RAM is dense memory technology. Data is stored as a charge in a capacitor and one transistor is used to access this charge on the capacitor. So the cell is made of one capacitor, one transistor. There is a select line uh, that controls opening and closing the transistor and the uh, data line is used to read what is stored uh, on the capacitor or to write it. The charge uh, in the capacitor uh, links with time so there is a need to refresh it and this is done by uh, reading what's left of the charge then uh, amplifying it and rewriting back before uh, it dissipates um, um, each cell is one bit and usually many uh, bits are organized in one row and uh, uh, the row uh, usually has uh, many bits and uh, uh, even uh, some uh, memory chips have several memory, memory banks in which uh, each bank is an array of bits organized in rows and columns. Usually one row is read at a time. Uh, this is the classic DRAM chip. Such chips were very popular 40 years ago. Uh, the main design objective was to build uh, cheap uh, chips uh, because we need many of them to have high uh, memory uh, storage capacity or high, high memory capacity. Uh, in order to reduce the cost, this package should be small and uh, to, to minimize the number of uh, pins, the uh, address bus is, uh, is minimized by sending the address uh, in two parts. First, the uh, uh, raw address is sent and stored in the, which is half of the address the usually the uh, most significant bits of the address are sent and stored in the raw address latch uh, and the raw address strobe is used for this purpose then the uh, column address the lower half of the address is sent and stored in the column address latch you, and the column address strobe is used to control this latch. Uh, there are two decoders, one to decode the row address into to select one of the rows and the column address is used to select one of the column. This is the timing, typical timing diagram of uh, accessing the classic DRAM. Um, uh, on the address bus, the processor sends or the circuits that controls the, the DRAM uh, sends the row address first, then the column address first, the, the column address. When the uh, row address is ready uh, RAS goes from high to low and when the column address is available uh, CAS is brought down uh, usually after some time data can be read or written to the DRAM this is one uh, read write cycle and this is another one where uh, both RAS and CAS go high then when the next row address is present 
uh, RAS goes down and so on. Now I'd like to show you a video titled What is DRAM from Microchip? Hello and welcome to Microchip's Memory Technology Series. So what is a DRAM? Well, DRAM stands for Dynamic Random Access Memory. DRAM memory was first marketed in the late 1960s, about 50 years ago, and was very likely the first memory integrated circuit ever sold. In this video, we'll show you how the DRAM core memory works at a very high level. You'll need to dig deeper on the internet if you want to learn more. Then we'll step you through advantages and disadvantages of this technology. This is a DRAM cell. One transistor and one capacitor make up one memory bit. That is only two elements per cell. By comparison, static RAM or SRAM has six transistors per cell and flash has one per cell. Through continued improvements over these 50 years, DRAM has remained the second most compact memory technology in production, second only to flash memory. And unlike flash, but like SRAM, it's volatile, which means it loses its data content on a power loss to the IC. But also, unlike flash, but again like SRAM, it is very fast and has symmetrical read and write speeds. Here's where it sits on the price chart. Well cheaper than SRAM. DRAM is, in fact, the lowest price per bit symmetrical speed, which means fast read equals fast write speed, memory on our planet today and is widely used to hold large working files, e.g. Excel spreadsheets or Word documents until you hit save on your PC and move the results to flash or to a hard drive. This capacitor effectively holds the bit's value. It can be charged up to a high voltage. We'll call that a logic one and we'll use one volt for our logic one for this video example. Or it can be discharged to a low voltage, which we'll call a logic zero, which equals VSS or ground in this video explanation. Note that this MOS gate switch here sits over a substrate that is connected to either power or ground to make it work. Again, we will use VSS or ground in our video and there's a small leakage path from this gate's drain into the substrate when the gate is off through this reverse diode junction here. The capacitor will discharge after some finite time and fall below the midpoint, 0.5 volts in our example. Let's say that finite time is 200 milliseconds in our case, or one fifth of a second. So these memory cell capacitors need an occasional recharge to retain their memory value. The JEDEC committee standard for refreshing every DRAM capacitor on an IC is every 64 milliseconds or less. That's why this is called dynamic RAM. Dynamically refresh it 16 times at least each second or risk losing your memory content. So how is a refresh done? Well, the trick is to have the cells refresh themselves every time they are read. Then just by stepping through all the address word lines and doing a read-like command sequence at least 16 times a second for every word line will keep your DRAM data just like you wrote it. Now these are called bit lines and these are the word lines. Word lines are decoded usually from the top bits of the address bus you send to the IC and bit lines pass your data bus content to and from the internal memory cells. Now high density DRAM memory cell arrays can be thousands of cells in width and height. So both bit lines and word lines are many cells long. But to explain DRAM operation here, let's simplify to only a four by four matrix. Notice there are two bit lines for every memory column. We'll call these even and odd. These are connected to every other memory cell in the column. Each pair of even and odd bit lines must be perfectly matched in layout, load, and number of connections. To do a refresh or read, step one is to charge these even and odd bit lines to the same voltage exactly halfway between a one and a zero level. That brings this pair of inverters to exactly a midpoint, roughly 0.5 volts. Then disconnect this charging source. Step two, the word line then gates the targeted cell. Let's use this one onto this even bit line. The charge on this capacitor, which is high or one volt in this case, adds enough positive voltage change to this even bit line to raise this inverter input a small amount. 
but that small amount is enough to push down the odd bit line through the inverter and make this return inverter drive the high level even higher. This inverter loop continues until the even bit line is being actively driven to one volt by the second inverter, which then refreshes the capacitor to one volt just like we wanted. The same would have happened had we been reading a zero. The inverter pair would have refreshed the zero volt back to the capacitor. In an actual read instruction, the word line would have then selected a full block or page of memory cells, and then the rest of the address bus bits you sent to the IC would be decoded to decide which byte or word to send to the outputs of the IC. Now let's look at a write instruction. For a write instruction, the targeted bit lines are driven high or low, depending on if you are writing ones or zeros, and the capacitors inside the selected memory cells are moved to those written values. In DRAMs, memory bits can be read over and over, or written over and over, infinitely, without damage to the structure and without losing content. That is different than Flash, which has a destructive write and erase operation. Now there are microcontrollers that include DRAM blocks inside, but the standalone parallel integrated circuit DRAM market is huge. Because of its wide use, industry standard committees define DRAM interface speeds, clock rates, and bus widths in most cases. There are just too many variations to cover here in this video. A synchronous, synchronous DDR, which is double data rate, DIMMs, video RAMs, it's a very long list. So here is our DRAM wrap up. Value number one, DRAM is the lowest cost of the symmetrical read and write memories. Value number two, DRAM is the lowest cost of the infinite write memory accesses, which means there's no structural damage to the part. And value number three, because it's the lowest cost, DRAM is widely available in many formats, speeds, and packages. Disadvantages of DRAM is it is volatile. Content will be lost on any power loss to the IC. And two, attention must be paid to providing refresh cycles around 16 times each second to each memory cell. See our other videos to learn more details about various memory technologies, terms, and other memory concepts.